Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back. You know the drill. Another wonderful Wednesday. I almost forgot it for a second. Another wonderful Wednesday on the family room. Thank you guys for joining us. Let us know while we get going where you're watching from. We are coming at you live Live. from somewhere in the USA. St. Augustine, it's Wednesday night live. So we're going to put the countdown back on and redo that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, let us let us know where you're watching from. We're here to break down Sunday's sermon. Wait for it. But while we get in that. But while you're waiting for it. While you're waiting for it. Wait a little longer. And we're going to get into the announcements <clears throat> coming up. Um, I was just given from the newsroom. Yes, it appears that there are no food trucks this Sunday. There are no food trucks this Sunday. Thank you, Kelsey. There we go. Um, yeah, they so, had scheduling issues. We yeah, there's get scheduling them. issues, and then I know there's a bunch of other stuff going on. Uh, all the fam groups have ended, right? The what? The women's and the men's. They ended not yeah, the last night. Fam groups, but, both yeah. of them did. Uh, the ladies finished theirs. We finished ours. What a great time! Good, good topics, good subjects. The last few weeks. Now people are asking what next. I know Kathy's working on a few things. I know that the ladies' monthly fellowship is coming up on the 9th. So for the ladies that are looking for some more fellowships, some more get-togethers, mark your calendars. That's going to be on May the 9th at 6.30. I know that they're going to have a good time. They're looking for you to be in there. And we are preparing something for the men. Yes. Something that we we rolled out to the guys that were in the group the other night. and, And a little bit has been teased out. Um, two words, beast, feast. Not like everybody else does it. We're going to do something pretty Every special. Every time we say that, I instantly think of the the roast beast thing from the Grinch. I don't know why. I have no Every idea time you say is. beast, feast, it makes me think of the, the roast beast at the end of the Grinch. That's coming up in June. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my brain. Um, June yeah. 22nd, men mark your calendars. We'll be telling you more as it gets closer. You don't want to miss this. I'm excited about that. I'm actually, when we finish this, I am going to get some charcoal and I am cooking that brisket that I got Come on. the other day. I'm starting it tonight so it'll be ready for dinner tomorrow because it's oh, take well, You can forever. bring it to lunch tomorrow at church. It won't be done by then. <laughs> they take forever. Uh, Dining with Dignity is May the 2nd. That is at the time of this live announcement uh, tomorrow, but that is 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. The next Women's Fellowship, uh, the Thursday night one, is May 9th. And uh, coming up again on May 18th is the Youth Movie Night. That's um, going to be good. That's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. They voted on it, and I don't I don't remember what the winning vote was. Oh, cool. So It'll be good either way. We'll see. Hopefully. They always have a good time <laughs> when they do that. That's Every Tuesday great. night, the youth meet at 6 o'clock from 6 to 8. Don't forget them, ages 13 to 18. They finalize their uh, plans for the mission trip to Honduras. They've got uh, several of them that are going to Honduras. So that's all finalized. They had their first meeting last um, Monday. So all that is in motion. Be praying for them. Glad to have you guys in whichever room you're in, YouTube or Facebook. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what you guys are doing, what you're having for dinner, and what was the strangest thing that happened to you today. Well... I didn't have anything strange happen today. Not I did, today, uh, but you was, had a couple of things happen this week. That was week. a great, uh, yeah, yesterday. That was insane. Um, yeah. I've, yeah. You want to say it? Tell it. Not really. No? I it was don't a pretty know. cool it's event. private. No, yeah, so yesterday um, I met with Church Front, a couple guys from Church Front. If anybody have seen those, they're really big on YouTube to go around and help out churches. Uh, they're going to be helping us with all of our upgrades coming up in in the room really quick, uh, getting all the sound stuff dialed away, Woo, getting new I'm cameras. About that. Um, so if you want to give as to that, as I thought that our give. sound was, they said that our sound really needs improving. Yeah. So you'll no- see a mark, It'll a be notable huge. improvement. Going by the, uh, the, um, the videos that they showed me of other churches that they're working in. And he actually, he showed me a video. They're still in the process of integrating stuff at this other church. And this was only the second week of them doing it. And it sounded like 
phenomenal. So I'm come like on. up here come on. so ready to see so it. So if you come to Family Church or you watch us online, both of those uh, outlets are going to get so much better. Yeah, watching online, the audio is going to get a lot better. This probably will stay roughly the same just because, you well, know, we've it's already just spent us. like dollars and dollars on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, now we have to get another microphone since one just disappeared. <laughs> we've um, spent dollars and dollars on this. But yeah, I'm I'm super excited, especially for the cameras. We were going over that stuff. Again, I said it a second ago, but um, you know, if you watch online and you, you want to help support the ministry, please give to that because this will Either cost way. money. And obviously we're in the process of still buying the land. So We're still working on all that. So th- that's, that's a good fun. point. Your giving matters. Your giving helps. You can do that all online. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we keep everybody informed. We haven't taken up an offering in the building since 2017. Uh, that's very unusual for churches. We just uh, you know trust God, and when there's a need, we mention it. Uh, you can give in the building. You can give online. But everything that you do, everyone who watches all of this would do that just a little bit. It would totally transform oh, yeah. the yeah. future. They were so, actually... Um, when they pulled up our YouTube, they were surprised at the amount of subscribers we have. They yeah. were like, that is really unusual for a building this size. Well, we've got we've got Jared Cochran. <laughs> that's nothing special. You need the other <laughs> JC. You gotta have the Jesus Christ. That's the one that there you go. That the other like, JC. <laughs> all trying to get people about. But yeah, I'm I'm insanely excited about uh whoop, whoop. Uh, some weird voicemail thing. Good things up. are going on. Uh, I'm really excited about all the upgrades, especially just cleaning things up and streamlining it. Um, if, if you weren't serving and you come to the house, now is the time to get involved for, with production because it's going to get. We had a great a meeting Sunday. Fun. We had a, our team meeting, the first one that we've had since uh, June 16th, 2022, uh, getting all of our teams together. I think it was 19. Was, was it 19? Last one. I think you said it was 2019, 2019. was the last team meeting because it was right. a few You're years. Right. I, it's been so long, I forgot. We got together with five of our teams. There was, what was it, music production? Security. Security. And Voyager Kids. Voyager Kids. Music. So those were together, and we're really excited about what's going on with them. So if you're a part of those teams, thank you. If you're not and you're looking for teams to get involved with, we keep rolling that out. Uh, we would love to have everybody participate and involved. It, it makes a massive difference when you put your hand yes. on a plow and get involved. So Especially with what happened yesterday with the word... Uh, I had some, some, I have no idea who it was. I don't want to go into the whole thing because I won't take up all the time. But there was a, an, an older lady that came up, stopped us on the way out of lunch. And she said, uh, do you boys know the Holy Spirit? And so I immediately stopped. Um, not, not, actually, it was really just because of that question. As I was telling you, most people, they, you know, they ask you, do you know Jesus? Do you know God? That is the first time ever, mm-hmm. and I've only been on this earth for, earth for 33 years, but I have never heard someone say, have you, or do you know the Holy Spirit? So I was like, that's a really interesting way to <laughs> open that conversation. And uh, she spoke words, prophetic words over each of our lives. There was four of us there and uh, drove it home with each of us. And uh, God is getting ready here to show up and show out. Mm-hmm. So I have been praying that inspiring. specifically, and I haven't told anybody that. And I don't think that's like a big popular phrase, mm-hmm. probably. Mm-hmm. And she said those words verbatim. So that's Very how cool. I was like, oh, okay. God knows what you so need. I'm excited just stay for everything excited. that's going to happen here. For everybody, stay excited. That's what we got to wait for. The it. only other alternative is to be bored. And <laughs> we don't need any more boring churches. We need some burning churches. Somebody, somebody should preach that. Get excited. Stay excited. Be ready. Stay ready. It inspired me towards Ocean Isle. When I go up there to deliver something, I think I'm going to start off of that and, and build on something. So let's go to work tonight. Uh, breaking down the sermon from Sunday. If you were here... We spoke from Habakkuk chapter 2, and if you were not here, we're going to go after this tonight. The the subject was waiting, and the three words that I tied together was the three words in verse 2, wait for it, wait for it. Um, If you were here, did you have a favorite thought, line, a thought that you want to share? I know some of you take good notes and you write good notes on there, but I started with the the story of Habakkuk and how God told him to write it down, and the vision will come, but if if it waits... If it tarries, he said to wait for it. Are you a good waiter? No. Well, see, not you at know, all. In I don't the know sermon, where I get it from. I asked <laughs> your mother. I asked the people, how many of you in here in the room love to wait? There was like three hands. That three went hands went up in the it whole like, building. Yeah. I'm like, I need to talk to you people because I don't know anybody <laughs> that loves to wait. 
And then when I said, okay, flip that down, how many of you hate to wait? 98% of the hands in the building went up. The, yeah, we are not we are not a waiting no. uh, society, especially with, with fast food now. I mean, we talk about it all the time Everything. now, fast food faith. We are, uh, <laughs> we are not good waiters. And I think just humanity as a whole uh, is not good mm-hmm. at waiting. I mean, you look no. at the Israelites coming out of Exodus, and it was supposed to be, what, like 11, 11 to 14 days, days or mm-hmm. something? Yeah, 11 days. <laughs> it took them 40 years because they immediately started complaining. They, road rage. You yeah. see all these videos of people trashing a, a McDonald's drive through window because their order I've wasn't ready. It. I've been uh, behind somebody in a, in a McDonald's line as well, <laughs> and they were losing their mind. And it's just... We Nobody gets excited about waiting, down. even though waiting is a command from God. And, I, you know, we kind of dug off of that from one of your sermons recently. You, you said something about something, and you said that's a command. It's, it's a command from Courage. God. Which was it? Courage is a commandment. Courage is a command. Mm-hmm. And that lit something in me that when we look at the commands of God, we need to always see it just like that. It is a command. So this is a command that God said to wait. And we are not a people that waits very well. No, we like everything immediate. Uh, and I've actually heard somebody... Um, mentioned before that their their wife had said like they uh she was like i would have no problem uh in my trials and waiting if god would just give me the timetable right right like if you knew <laughs> like mm-hmm. you're gonna be done with x or y mm-hmm. or z in two mm-hmm. weeks two years 20 years mm-hmm. it would take a lot of the load off but it is that unknown mm-hmm. that makes it so hard to wait and it's just, I mean, it's really, that's the whole point of it, though, is to right. stretch your faith to yes. get you to trust more in God. Waiting. Um, and waiting is just. Waiting is not one of my is, one of my hard. things. I don't like it. I don't like to wait. Because I think that when I said it, action is empowering. It feels it feels better when you're doing something. We have said it's in the word, James 1.22, be ye doers of the word. And so as I'm doing something, I feel like I'm being more biblical. But that whole thing. It's so strange because your mother's favorite verse is Psalms 27, 13. It is her favorite verse in the Bible. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Uh, I guess she, she's just strange. She's just got that capacity for patience. Waiting is worship. Patience is praise. Absolutely. All yeah, of those things. Uh, what's your favorite verse? Uh, mine? Everyone knows my favorite verse. Proverbs 28, 1. Oh, well, now I can't say mine. The wicked flee when so, no man pursues. Well, that's not the righteous fair. I got to find a, a new verse. Everybody, well, since we're doing this, what's your life verse? <laughs> you have favorite, a favorite yeah, verse? What's your favorite verse? Drop I, your I life verse. I love Proverbs twenty-eight one, the lion. Uh, I love Ezekiel thirty-seven. That's why it's on my knuckles. See all this thing that there people appointment means that it's on the schedule. Yeah, I think Julie Tucker was one. She shared that afterwards. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Knowing that that it's on the schedule makes it more able for you to be able to wait. Uh, sometimes when God is telling you to wait, and I made a little list of it, and it, the list got longer and stronger as I went. Um, he says to stand still. He says to be still, and God says to wait. Um, while you're waiting, pray. Wait. Be silent. Say nothing. Let your enemies rage. I think that's... Um that's probably the problem with waiting is I think that we equate waiting to being idle mm-hmm. and we're not just supposed to be idle. We're mm-hmm. supposed to still be, you know, praying, mm-hmm. worshiping, seeking God. It's not just like, Oh, well, God told me to, to, to wait for my Boaz. So I'm just going to go sit in my house and, you know, hopefully he'll come knocking on my door. Like, no, <laughs> that's not how that works. Um, but yeah, it's, I think that's really it. Like we just, we, we need to realize God's not calling us to be mm-hmm. idle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what the Sabbath is for. You, you stay busy. You stay doing your life. You stay doing the necessary things. You stay doing what you know is right. Reading, praying, worshiping, discipling, reaching the lost, doing every, all that you do, walking in faith and all of that. But at the end of the day, what you're doing is just saying, I'm, I'm trusting God enough to, to wait however long it takes for this thing to come to pass. Waitingness is the willingness to obey God and stand still knowing that he will make all things beautiful in his time. Uh, that little phrase that came alive to me. God never said, I will make things beautiful in your time or when you want them to be. God says he will make things beautiful in his time. Well, what is it? The A day 
to the Lord is like a thousand years mm-hmm. and a thousand years is like a day. And it's like Tony just said, the, the vision is for an appointed time. Mm-hmm. And God will always give us what we yes. need in the season that we need it. He won't give us, you know, they always say God will never give you more than you can handle. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. Um, which I, I kind of get, but now I'm kind of getting to the place where like, I don't know if I'm like all the way committed to that because mm-hmm. if if it's not a little more than you mm-hmm. can handle, you're not going to really, gr- it's like working out to me. Mm-hmm. Like if mm-hmm. you stay, you work your way up to, let's just say bench and you bench, you work your way up to bench in 225 and then you just stay there. Mm-hmm. Eventually it doesn't grow your muscle anymore and it's just, mm-hmm. you plateau. So you kind of have to get a little more than you can handle. That way you can reach the next level. But at the same time, knowing that you can't handle it lets you grow your faith as well Mm -hmm. so that you can trust God a little more and a little deeper because you know that it is a little bit more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what it means a little bit when it's talking about the battle is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, to go back to it, like the vision for an appointed time, not getting things for... uh, things in due season, to get things in due season, to get what you need in the season that you need it. You know, it's kind of like you couldn't, uh, it's, I don't don't know. It would be like just um, feeling called by God to preach and then preaching one message. And then all of a sudden you have a 20,000 member church you would have no idea Oof. how to sustain that or anything mm-hmm. like that because you don't have the right. the life experience and the experience in that. You kind of have to grow into it. So mm-hmm. it's not, you can't just necessarily just, you know, get everything right. all at once. God has to give you what time. you can handle. Yeah. So that's why the vision, I think, is for the appointed yeah. time. You have to kind of... I think one of the most important things it. for people to understand in life is the, real, the reality of seasons. Um, the seasons. I mean, I talked to somebody one time not long ago, who says, I, I just reject that. I don't believe that. I think that that's a word that preachers use as a cop-out. They were, they were quite stirred up about it, but it's in the Word. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Solomon said, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose. You've got to understand the seasons of life, and you're in a different season of life than I'm in. You're in that um, that spring. I mean, you're in that spring season of your life. You're young, you're strong, uh, and all of that. I'm in the fall or, or heading toward the winter. You know, I'm getting older. And so my season is different. So I can't approach life like you can. I have to approach life in this season that I'm in, how I do it. And you've got to understand the seasons of life. And one of the things I said Sunday, uh, y'all get ready for this. Um, I see a lot of scripture verses over there. Thank you for sharing your, your life verses. Um, but one of the things that I said was somebody may need a reminder that right now where you are is in your waiting season, that all that God requires of you right now is to wait while you're waiting, while you're waiting, he is working, working while you're waiting. He is working. I had a young man contact me after church and the next day, the next day on Monday, he sent me a nice uh, text message. He's got my number and I didn't realize that he's been out of work for uh, six months. Didn't know. He didn't say. His family just kept going. And so he sent me this thing, and he said that during the sermon, his wife looked over at him and said, he's talking to you. (laughs) This is everything that you need to hear right now. That waiting season, um, you know, and I've been in them. I've been in waiting seasons. And to me, this is just me being honest on the family room. It's my worst thing. It's my worst thing. I like it when God is doing something, when action is happening, when... Walls are coming down and giants are falling on the ground and good things are going on. But when it seems like nothing is going on and you're just plotting, Mm -hmm. you're just plotting and plotting and plotting. So maybe, you know, if that's you guys and you feel like it, say so in the chat. Maybe you're in a waiting season. that's the thing, too. I always forget every time I go to bring up the story, I always draw a blank. But it's the... uh I'm sure it's it's in there somewhere. (laughs) It's in the... the, uh, Where... um they're just going through the routine, the day to day stuff. And then, you know, God shows up. I'm, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure that's all in the Bible, but the one I'm thinking of, it's completely just, as soon as I got to bring it up every time. It's in the it Bible, goes, Hezekiah 22, right 12. Of, it's in there. It's, it's in there somewhere. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, just going back to waiting, it's, it's not fun waiting no. and we're always wanting to do something. It feels good to be doing yes. something. It feels good to be in, you know, the, the, the flow, the flow in the season of growth, in the season of, you know, 
blessings and things are happening. Mm -hmm. And then it's like when God is just wanting you to just take the chill pill mm -hmm. and get in scripture and just, you know, keep up the daily routine because he's got something better coming your way. You're like, where, what is going on? Where are you at, God? All like, the people all the around stuff, you yeah. are getting blessed and great things are happening and they're driving in and they're, they're new cars. And that's a and big thing too that I think a lot of Christians need to uh, grow up on mm -hmm. is being excited for someone else's yes. blessing. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Exactly, because we have such a, I mean, you see it all the time. If I went out right now and I posted, uh, you know, hey, I just went out and got a new truck. Oh, must be nice. Must be nice. The favorite favorite phrase, must be nice. It's like, yes, it is nice. <laughs> it is nice. Because I worked for it. And it's just, I mean, you've said it before. People don't mind when, you're, when you are successful until you're more successful than them. Whoop. Then they start hating you. As long as you are on, uh, I don't even want to say a level playing field. Because then they're already starting to get like, eh, you know, people want you just that little bit underneath them so they can, you know, oh, I'm still doing better than you because mm -hmm. you want to feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. But we have really got to yes. start being able to celebrate other people's blessings. Beat that drum loud. Because how much more could the blessing coming towards you be right. if you were excited yes. for, you know, what I was going, what I was receiving from mm -hmm. God I think instead it, of just being, I mean, think about like Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. Where God accepted His mm -hmm. offering, right. because He brought it, you know, in in good faith and good heart, and it's like, uh, you know, Cain, He just strikes him down because he's so jealous mm -hmm. of it. And it's mm -hmm. like, dude, what if, what if you would have just been like, oh, okay, I guess I should have done it a little bit different, How you different know, and had, you know, mm -hmm. and realized. Yeah, it just it go over to your brother and be like, hey, uh, what did you do that mm -hmm. God liked yours a little better? That's so But no, we contrary. instantly just, oh, must be nice. And we mm -hmm. get mad and ticked off. And then we run and do rash things. And it's like, you're the probably negating said, a yeah. lot of your blessing. You are. The old preacher said, if God is blessing your neighbor, that means he's in the neighborhood. So you, you should said be that thankful. recently too. Huh? You said that I don't, if it's either yeah. this Sunday if or last Sunday. he's blessing your neighbor, that means he's in the neighborhood. You should rejoice with them. Because I think it qualifies you. I think it qualifies and shows a level of maturity in your life that, that now you've crossed from that immaturity and that childishness and you've crossed into that new place where you can rejoice with everybody who's being blessed and be happy for them. It's a command of God to wait, and when we disobey any command that God gives us, bad things are going to happen. When we don't wait, when we get impatient and we try to force things to happen, Bad things happen as a result of that. I mentioned I mentioned the things that are going on with Abraham and Isaac and Ishmael. People may not know the full reality of that story, but Abraham was told to wait for the child, for the promise of the father, Isaiah, Isaac, Isaac and he didn't wait for Isaac. He got Ishmael, and we have had 4,000 years of trouble out of Ishmael. So... If God is in your in your business right now and God just has you in that holding pattern and that waiting pattern, whatever you do, obey that. Just obey that. And just trust the Lord fully. fully obey He'll get too. you through it. Huh? I said fully obey it. Because partial Come obedience on. is still disobedience. Mm -hmm. If God tells you to walk, you know, bad analogy, but if he tells you to walk 50 miles and you only go 49, uh, you know, uh, what's the, uh, what's the, who was who was it that had to go dip in the the water? Naaman. Yeah, the story uh, that I used to start with. Yeah, I was. It was. I was like, uh, and then I didn't want to get the name wrong. Um, but yeah, like, or no, what's um? That's not the one I'm thinking of. The one with the arrows striking the ground. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, you know, he only struck the ground. Was it three times? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, "Why did why you, you stop? Yeah. Like you got to keep going until you're told to stop. You have partial obedience is disobedience. You have to, you have to uh, follow God fully because He's telling you it for a reason. Right? You know, I mean, it's just if He's telling you to walk 50 miles and you go 49, and then you know you step on attack and you're like, well, I'm not walking anymore. And it's like, well, how do you know what was what was right around the corner that you're just you know." You gave up too soon. Mm -hmm. Like you see that stupid picture on social media where it's like the two guys mining, yeah, mm -hmm. and the one guy's going away, and the other one guy's right beside hit, the diamond. You got it. It's like that. I mean, like we give up so quick, but mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I've said. The only super power that Kathy and I have is that we refuse to give up. We just refuse to quit. So that's why we're going to win because we just don't quit. Um, I use the phrase "meantime." 
I saw that get used to. Um, Somebody used it back at me. I saw. Oh, uh, <laughs> did they? I saw it used on on uh, on Facebook afterwards. Yeah. But I didn't see it get used that yet. Uh, you, well, it was it was an in, in joke. I, I posted the next day that some people need a hand, some people need a hand up, and some people need a backhand. And uh, Moose wrote on my Facebook page and said, uh, "It must be in your meantime." <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, meantime. That, that was good. That was a really good. See, you got some, you got right. some wordplay in there. I could wordplay. I can do it with <laughs> any of them if I want to. I just didn't want to. Uh, in the meantime, is the time that you are waiting, and it's also the time that you can get mean. I can get mean in that time because I'm short, patient, short temper, and I have to usually go back and apologize to people for what I said when I was impatient at the time. So. Oh, yeah, that's because, I mean, it's probably just because, and I'm preaching to myself here because I don't have, uh, like we've been talking about, we don't have patience. I want everything, Quickly. not like immediate, but I want to, I want to, you know, like, I like the results. Like, I like to, it's it's like <laughs> like building something. You like to go out and see it get done. Quickly. You know, psh, like this worked, this worked, and this worked. It's like when you go to work on your car and then you snap a bolt off or you, you're missing a part <laughs> or you grabbed, uh, like, like, um, Kelsey today, she ordered, uh, we're cleaning out the pool, trying to get the pool back ready for, um, for the kids for the mm-hmm. summer. And, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, the extension cord for the pump got ran over by the lawnmower. And since we haven't used it, you know, I just left it off instead of letting it stay running. So the filters needed to get replaced. And she went on Amazon and literally went to previous orders where we got the filters from and reordered the same exact filter, completely different size now. Oh, so it's like, oh man, like, you know, just that, like you want to see the results instead of waiting. And instead it's like, you know, God, I think in those times, obviously, I don't want to say I think, but clearly in those times, he's trying to not just stretch your faith towards him, but get you to stretch your patience to where you can have more patience. And, you know, he's probably getting us to try to work on those types of things where we're mm-hmm. short fused to just trust him, but, uh, <laughs> to learn how to, what it nature, means to, to wait on the stumble. Lord, to trust him in the process and to wait, knowing that he, since he knows the end from the beginning, that he knows that and everything in between, he knows when it's right and when it's time and when it will bring him, as you've said, maximum glory, it will bring him the greatest glory for you. That phrase, and I think it was what we said earlier, Julie Tucker and a couple of other people that keyed in on it, um, appointed time. Why is this not happening for me? Why is it not happening yet? Why am I having to wait? Um, it is, the word says in Habakkuk chapter two, it is at an appointed time. It is, it is at a time in life when God says, now, it's time for that to happen now. And, and until God says it's time for that to happen now, it's going to be out of time. And you don't want to operate in a time that is not God's time. Yeah, his timing is the perfect mm-hmm. timing. I mm-hmm. think, you know, you can't say uh, God is God's showing up late or showing up early. Whenever he's coming, it is dead on it's time. when it's supposed to be the right time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that makes me think of just the beginning of the world in creation. He could have obviously just spoken everything right. on one word, just, you know, and then everything's there. But instead, he took the time to do it. Uh, he took the time to, you know, create. <laughs> then she broke the pool hose. He took the time to create this first and then this first and then this first and then this. And then it's like, and then he finally ends up with man. Mm-hmm. And we're all the way at the end. But when we needed to be there, after everything else was already there, mm-hmm. Instead when of we just, needed to be, you know, creating man and then we're just, you know, Adam's just floating around in darkness or, you know, there's, there's the world, but there's no, there's no land. So he's just what, like floating on the water, like everything has the appointed time that mm-hmm. it's supposed to be done, supposed to be created. And so, it's just. So as an encouragement, uh, Galatians chapter six, um, verse nine, be not weary in well-doing for in due season, you will reap if you do not lose heart. Um, I don't know who that might be for, how that might translate into your life, but you might be in that, that, that pattern of right now you're just cycling and you're waiting and you're just trusting and you're praying and you're believing and you're hoping and you're enduring and it's no fun and you don't like it and I don't want to keep doing this. But let me tell you, there is an appointed time. It is on the schedule that it's going to happen and in due season. 
Hope deferred, hope, uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. I promise you this, that it might feel like it's going to kill you until it happens. But when it happens, whatever it is, that was the whole title of the sermon, wait for it, whatever it is. When it happens, whatever it is, it will be worth it. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. All you will remember is how good this was. So um, let everyone around me get blessed. My time's coming. Let my world fall apart. My time is coming. I just know that it's, it's, on, it's on the book. So I'm not going to waste my weight Don't by waste complaining. Your weight. Don't waste your weight. Uh, I got distracted because Kelsey said, that she snatched on it too hard because the weeds were over the pool hose that she broke. The story that I got earlier was that when she picked it up, it was just so brittle that it broke. So, well, Or she's uh, so strong. We're finding out things here <laughs> on the family room. Uh, no, but what you were just saying made me think of the, the great illustration of just, um, you know, because nobody wants to hear, you know, it, it's it's so cliche, but it, re- it really is kind of the only thing to say is just wait for it. Just You just mm-hmm. have to wait keep waiting. It. You have to have patience. And while you're in that, don't stay idle. Continue to press into God. Continue to get into your Bible. And it made me think of the analogy of just, uh, you know, you are in the middle of a story, uh, you know, and you're, you're here. Maybe you're here while you're waiting and there's still all of this that has to happen. There's always the beginning. There's always the middle. There's always the end. But you could be right here and you have no idea what is on the next page, on. what's on the next coming, you know, couple pages, what's in your next chapter. There's always something coming your way. And it's just, you've got to realize that, you know, we say it all the time. If you're not dead, God's not done. Come on. If you're in the middle of your story, there's always still, I think that's, I don't want to get too like, trigger pointed with certain words, but you know, I think that's why Satan gets a lot of people to, uh, end things early, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, just because he gets you to think that there is, there's no, uh, there's no good ending to your story. He gets you to think that there's nothing left for you. There's nothing left to look forward to or anything like that. But you have to realize you're just in the middle of your book. You're in the middle of your chapter. You could still be just in the beginning section of your story Amen. where all the stuff starts falling apart and you have no idea what's actually coming up. Even just the middle, you might not have even hit the peak point yet. You haven't even hit the climax yet. You're still in the introduction or the prologue. Come on. Then there's still so much left in your story that God wants to work out that you have no idea uh, how good it is because he works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And there's so much more to each and every one of our stories. And we're all called to different things. I think that's what's awesome about the body of Christ and you know, uh, for a weird, you know, just a weird term, like, you know, you could be a hand and someone else can be a foot or Mm -hmm. a knee or a kneecap. We all have different parts that we're supposed to be doing. That's why I was talking about, um, I've, you know, I've said it before on here and I was talking about it to the guys at church front, just all of the infighting that's going on Mm -hmm. within just the church as a whole, not, you know, not necessarily here, but just like the differing denominations and, you know, Oh, we think we're doing it right. Don't listen to them. We think we're doing it right. Don't listen to them. And it's like, <clears throat> for the biblically based churches that we know our Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ, and we're all working towards that, and we're all trying mm-hmm. to spread Jesus to the world and get people to wake up from the darkness that surrounds him, we're all on the same team. Mm-hmm. And we need to, I think Christians as a whole, we all need to realize that and realize that we're all trying to work for the same thing, just in different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, you can reach the older generation better than I can. I can reach Mm -hmm. the younger generation better than, you know, maybe you can, or, you know, like me, we have tattoos, so we can't go to a church down the street that only wears suit and ties and not that there's anything wrong with it, but I can't reach the people that are in that building because they're going to tune me out just by the way I look. And is that right? No, that's judging someone. But at the same time, they can't come up probably in this building necessarily and reach the same people that we can. We're all called, I think, to reach certain pockets of people in certain areas. And, you know, whether that's all over the world or, you know, just in a little section of your town or what have you, there's always, there's always a reason behind mm-hmm. what God has called us to do. And I, 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 we just, we have to realize 
that we're all on the same team. I mean, it's like the state of the country right now where they're just, there's so much division and you have that division. And then you have the spiritual division where you've got the enemy has found his way into the buildings and into, um, Christianity and just started this whole big division of, you know, we're doing it this way and we're doing it this way. And it's like, guys, we have got to realize like we've got to get it together and just start truly seeking people instead of fighting each other over the dumbest things and having stupid debates over how worship music should sound or anything like that. Like, or if there's lights or there's smoke in the building, what does it matter at the end of the day? If the gospel of Jesus is being Mm -hmm. preached, (laughs) I'm not trying to have another, you know, I'm trying to figure out what that's got to do with patience. I don't know. It just, it's, it's flowing out. So, you know, I'm just, I'm I'm patiently waiting for you to make your, you're you're waiting for me to end. Um, no, I'm just, that's just, I don't know. It made me, there's something that you said made me think of that. Mm -hmm. And then I just come on. One of the things that I said, well, there's nothing wrong. It's the family room (laughs) for a reason. It's like talking to your family. Uh, one of the things I said that as we get older, um, and it's a kind of a paradox, we have, a, a. the older we get, the less time we have ahead of us, we have a greater capacity for patience. We have a greater capacity to wait. I can't explain that. I got to talk to some old people. I'm not young, old enough yet to know what that means. But it's a truth thing that, that as you get older, you, you have a greater capacity to be able to wait and to wait on God and wait on things, to wait on people. You don't get as impatient in a line when they don't have your hamburgers fast, been in restaurants and they don't have your food fast and everybody's like freaking out and you're like, ah, I'm having a good time. And you look at your watch, you've only been there for like 15 minutes, <laughs> but it's, it's longer than the five minute drive through. So, so a last little bit reminder, just the last few minutes that we've got, remember this, that patience is productive. Patience is productive. That the trying of your faith, James says, produces patience. And then you let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. That means that you are lacking and you're not complete until you have been through all of that with patience. Patience produces power. Isaiah 40, 31, this came out of nowhere. I had to be the Holy Spirit. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Patience produces power. As, as you wait on the Lord, he will strengthen your heart. So it's like the Sabbath. I mean, it's all about having patience and stopping all of the work. Mm -hmm. stopping all the work. And that's uh, what's funny too, um, and not to get completely off subject, but just on the subject of patience in the Sabbath. um, And you've probably heard of it, but the chiasms in the Bible, the literary devices, uh, the very first, if you guys look it up, and I don't want to get too crazy into it, there's these things called chiasms. And it's a literary device that they used. We don't really know them on Western culture, but they had it all the time. In the East, you know where I'm going with it? No, I know that you're in college and you want to make sure that we all know you're oh, in no. college. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. There's ways um, how they got. Um, so in, in Western culture, we learn by the transfer of information. I tell you two plus two is four, and you go, mm-hmm. okay, two plus two is four. In Eastern culture, the way that uh, they seek, they seek information to learn. And so in the Bible, there's these things called chiasms and you can cheat and you can look them up or if you want to find them, they're, they're usually bookended by the same phrase at the beginning of a section and the end of a section. And so just long story short, the entire structure of Genesis uh, 1 and I think part of 2 or maybe it's mainly 1, anyway, the, basically the whole story of creation, the way it's written is a chiasm. It has the same phrase beginning and end. And if you look at the way that it's written, uh, how each day uh, there was evening and morning, that's because uh, the days to the Hebrews began Mm -hmm. with rest. So that's why it says it doesn't say morning to evening. It was structured so that they knew that the days began with rest. And the way that it is structured is, uh, oh, and I've already forgot the main point. But basically, the entirety of creation, as they read it, and they realized that it was a chiasm, the very first, or the very thing that it points to in the middle uh, is about the Sabbath, the day, the final day of creation where God rested. And so the whole story of creation is designed at the very beginning to point towards, to point the people, because it was written uh, as they came out of Exodus, or as they, I'm sorry, as they came out of Egypt, 
out of their 400 years of slavery. And so they were used to always, you know, building bricks and building things and going and going and going and going and going and going and going. And the very first thing in the Bible, the way Moses structured it is to realize that God wants you to rest. Mm -hmm. That's it's it. The Bible is, if you think it's boring, you're boring. There's so much in the Bible that is awesome. It's just, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You have to have no look it up, look it up and that. study it. Like the way <laughs> it's insane. Like that's how, like when they say, oh, the Bible was written by man. Yeah. But like, you can just tell by stuff like that, just how inspired uh, it was by the Holy Spirit, how he was guiding people. Cause I'm telling you just the way that it was written, that whole thing, how it's structured. And then like, there's a whole bunch of numbers in just in the account of creation that all time ta- it's I heard I have it on no a podcast. No idea what this has to do with patience. Because the set resting patience oh. about resting. That's what I said at the beginning. Jeez, coming up. up. You lost your patience because you couldn't wait for the end of the story. See, no, it's, perfect. It was the whole thing. Just having having patience, knowing how to rest and, and trust and wait on the Lord. It's just the, the very first thing that we're taught. Yeah, you, you know said that in the sermon. In the that, Bible, the days is begin about with rest. rest. Yeah, yeah, the day, the Hebrew days begin I with like rest. I like that. That's more Jesus. That's than a I great know. way to to realize, or to not realize it, but to think about your day mm-hmm. instead of waking up and your day begins. Thinking about how your day begins with rest. When you lay down, I think they've got that that kind of thing figured out. Like when you lay down mm-hmm. and then you go to sleep, let that be the beginning of your day instead like of the that. end. That way, that might help you wake up more refreshed. I don't know. I haven't yeah. thought about it, and I I've do. known about it, but I do. I love that's it. something I need to think about. Come on, coming up Sunday, coming up Sunday. Funny story. Uh, I'll be preaching, and uh, I'm not going to say what because I said what I wanted to preach on now for a couple weeks, and I sat down today, and God was like, <laughs> "LOL, no, you're not doing that." Uh, so <laughs> not happening. <laughs> it'll be good. Um, yeah, it'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. It's as I was I was telling him beforehand, it's actually uh not the sermon I intended on preaching. God put up a, a Jericho wall in Come front on. of me there so I couldn't continue that one. And he brought me back to one that I had started and hit a brick wall on. So he's he brought me back to he, way, he wanted me to that. wait for that one so I could preach it now at this time. Now is the appointed time. <laughs> now this sermon is for this appointed so time. So y'all need to be in the house <laughs> on Sunday because it's an appointment. Let's I, go. I'm not at that point yet. Uh-huh. I need to go hang out with Clint Brown. <laughs> Somebody get me back in touch I with him. Get Let's him back up here. Let lunch. him preach a little bit for us. There you go. All Let's right. Do it. Well, well guys, we appreciate you all being there with us tonight, being patient as we work through this thing. I hope it was a blessing to you. Uh, if you're watching this live, tomorrow night is Dining with Dignity, 530 on Granada Street. If you'd like to show up and give them a hand, Saturday is our food pantry. If you'd like to help with that, every Saturday morning, show up about 7 a.m. I know that they could always use a couple of extra hands. Um, Sunday. You're going to be up to bat. It's going to be great. Show up at 10 a.m. Be here early. Why don't you come a little early and enjoy the fellowship? The building is is full of people, and it's nice to meet people. And don't come in late and leave early. You don't get a chance to grow in the community. It's great. And then it is nice to come in and sit early. Yeah, come in a little early. Get a good seat. I get here like 6 in the morning. (laughs) You can get the end seat on the row, and then you can meet some people, get some free coffee, (coughs) enjoy all of that. But I, I, I see it all the time. People say... Oh, I'm not, I'm not meeting anybody in church, but they come late and they leave early. You, th- that makes it impossible. The, the easiest way is to come early, stay late and get on a team. Definitely don't leave during the invitation. Right. I can't no. stand that. Come that early, like stay late and get on a parts. team. If you'll get on a team, I'll promise you, you'll meet some family, you'll meet some friends and you'll make some lifelong connections there. Exactly. All of our team members are great. Come early. I'm going to drop since it's the family room, I'm going to drop one more little nugget because let's go. Betty just said all the begats part of the Bible, all the genealogies, which are like such a bore mm-hmm. <laughs> to read through. Begat, begat, begat. Um, Cause I've been going through in my daily reading plan, going through uh, a little bit of Chronicles right now. And in the beginning of Chronicles, you know, for the first several chapters, it's just like father of so-and-so and blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. And you're like, Oh my goodness. If you're not dedicated to it, you'll just skim over. Uh, that is actually in there. If you, if as if annoying as it can be to like read Leviticus and stuff, you can think about it this way: that God is a God of details. If it's in there, it's in there for a purpose. And this was actually like Chronicles and those genealogies; those are in there because <clears throat> they were there for like uh, when the Israelites were in were put into exile from like the the Babylons or whoever else, and they went into exile. All those genealogies. 
and all of that stuff about which tribes got which section of land, those were all there so that when they came back from exile, because they were never meant to stay there for a long time, exile wasn't uh, punishment. Exile was more like a, a loving father um, disciplining them. And so he knew that they were going to come back. So he had them write down all the genealogies and who got what land. So as they came back from exile, they would know Mm -hmm. which tribe they would belong to and which area of the world and the land that they were supposed to belong to. So they could go back and re-inhabit those parts. So as you look at the begat parts of all the Bible that you don't want to read, realize it was in there so they could remember who they were as a people and where they were supposed to stay. And with that, that is the end of the family room. And if you come Sunday, you can hang out with Kelsey. And you can possibly. She runs around so much doing all the production stuff. It's that actually you, comical to watch her. Them. It's comical to watch her. She is. Buzz through the building like the director. Zing, zing, of zing, 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 everything zing. here. Kelsey needs an assistant. Any of y'all watching? Kelsey needs an assistant. Those standards she needs are going to be so high. Right? I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do Good. it. Before you volunteer, Look. I wouldn't do it. But I think it'd be cool if she had an intern. If I wasn't doing like what I'm doing, I wasn't involved in music, I would be in production. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. all the toys and playing with the cameras. Uh, and when we upgrade, we will have at least one mobile camera. And depending on how I want to do the back room, maybe two. Mm-hmm. So... Cool. We'll see you there. But, a lot going uh, on. A lot of good, exciting is, things that are going on. I'm Y'all stay super tuned. excited with that. Stay tuned. Keep your eyes open. Be on your knees praying. Continue to be loving and prayerful and supportive. Give as much as you know you should and watch what God's doing with it. It's just amazing what's going on right we're now. We're in an amazing season. And Come we're on. not quite where we need to be yet. We got a lot of work to do. Wait for it. I was hoping you'd it. pick it up, but you weren't looking at it. <laughs> with that we'll see you sunday 10 a.m come early if you're watching online we'll see you then you guys have a great rest of the God week bless you guys hey i hope that message spoke to you today i want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at family church and those who help support this ministry if you would like to get more involved you can click the link in the description or head to our website familychurch.social we would love to connect with you and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.